Gray skies above a desolate wasteland set the initial mood of our story. Dark clouds loom over a demolished home, where we see a young boy kneeling before the decapitated heads of his late parents. Tears drop down to the puddles of blood, his heart and hopes shattered. Heavy footsteps approach the broken-down boy before dealing with a fatal strike that sent his head flying across the destruction. A monster covered in spikes on its back, a grin dripping with blood, and a black halo hovering on top of his head take hold of the body of the once broken child and feasts on its reward. Two other figures approach the monster, one is covered in scales all over his body, and the other monster crawls on all fours with spikes on its back, a third eye peeking from its forehead, and a smile wider than Batman's the Joker. Both of them don the black halo that hovered above their heads. The crawling monster asks the feasting monster if it is saving another serving for later, which confuses the monster. Out of nowhere, a battle cry came from behind the monster. The child from earlier leaps towards the confused monster but unfortunately gets caught by the neck of the monster. The monster showed signs of confusion since the boy at eight is now fighting him with full health and a complete body. It has a theory in mind and tests it on the child. It grabs the child's forearm and rips it off, spouting a blood fountain from the frail child's body. The child wriggles in pain and cries as his torn body grows back to another arm. This makes the monster grin with curiosity while the other two are shocked by the never-seen event before and try to make sense of this situation. They concluded they had a new toy they could play with and an endless food supply that could fill their stomach for all eternity. Since they claim the boy is their own, they plan on naming him. Lizard's Tail is the name they gave him since he has regenerative abilities that allow him to regrow severed limbs and repair damaged parts. The regeneration ability was initially thought of as a gift of God to the young boy, but now it is nothing but a torturous curse that will be going through over several years. Screams of the now teen Lizard's Tail being torn limb by limb as he was chained to a large boulder. They proceed to unchain the torture teen, and the crawling monster provokes the boy to intend to fight. The boy has been in this situation multiple times, only to lose a fight he will never win. This serves as a way to feed the crawling monster's sadism which could not care less about who it fights and even uses the boy's deceased parents as a form of provocation that angers the boy who leaps towards the monster. The monster dashes towards the boy, leaving a fountain of blood behind. From the unnatural speed of the monster, the boy's arm gets ripped off and is eaten by the monster. The monster then sends a flurry of attacks, and the boy barely dodges them. He then ducks down below the monster and prepares to hit it with an uppercut. But it is proven fatally ineffective when it grabs him by the wrist. The shatters the captured arm and goes in closer for a bite which then the boy uses this moment as an opportunity to counterattack. He snaps his forearm in half and rips it off, then shoves a shiv from his shredded arm into the monster's mouth. He escapes the monster's clutches, and the other monsters taunt him for being hit by a human. The monster becomes furious, grabs the boy's head, and slowly crushes it. The monster who initially captured the boy tells the crawling monster to let go of him then the boy taunts him as the weakest monster among the three because it needs to gain permission to kill a mere human. This angers the crawling monster more and gets his head slightly crushed before the monster who appears to be their leader, grants the crawling monster a deal where it will reveal the location of human survivors if it lets go of the boy. Moments later, the sound of metal clanging reverberates throughout the mountainside. Our struggling captive chews on the chains, and the monsters pity him for such an approach to escape. He drips blood, and broken teeth fall to the ground leaving a trail as he's dragged away. Footsteps approach the trail, and the unknown person investigates the trail and makes haste to catch up so they can attempt to rescue our captive. Moments later, we hear our captive screaming to warn humans to get away because of the monsters which annoy the said monsters. They then hear footsteps running behind them, and we see a man with a pole hanging on his back. He thanks the captive for leading him to the monsters despite the boy trying to get people away. The monsters look at him as a weakling and prepare for an attack. The man pulls out a bell and rings it, then from the base of the handle, wind gushes out then we see a figure of a giant woman standing behind him. He then pulls out a sword from the pole and slices the monsters one by one as he reveals he is part of a group of humans who specializes in killing monsters called the Monster Hunters, and his name is Chen Wu. Lizard's tail is now released from his chains, and tears roll out of his eyes. He receives a new goal in life, to become a monster hunter too. A boy's screams of plea to learn how to become a monster hunter echo throughout the area. Chen Wu tells him to apply as a trainee, he will teach him once they return to their group. Chen investigates the monster's corpses and hears blood splattering out of nowhere. He then turns to the boy, where he is seen smashing his arm with a rock. He reveals his regenerative abilities to Chen and then tells him what he went through over the years. He then tells him that he does not need to become a soldier and begs Chen to teach him how to kill monsters. Chen regrets not being able to find the captive boy in time and wonders what kind of life he has lived all this time. Chin then asks for the boy's name, and he blurts out the name the monsters gave him and accepts it as his own so that he will never forget what they did to him. 
He tells Chen that his name is Lizard's Tail, then Chen agrees to teach him but warns him that the training method will be extremely painful. Lizard grins menacingly at this information since he has endured endless pain for years, and killing monsters is what he wants to do. Chen proceeds to explain to Lizard some useful information. The dark halo that hovers above the head of monsters disappears once the monster is dead. The monster who initially captured Lizard is still alive, and Chen plans on helping Lizard get his first kill which he is grateful for. Moments later, the monster wakes up chained to a boulder like how Lizard was for years. He attempts to break free from his shackles before receiving a stab to the shoulder. Chen sits on top of the boulder and tells the monster that he will kill it if it tries to escape. Chen jumps down and tells the monster to wait and will be given a chance to escape. Chen teaches Lizard how to possess divine power in a different area and tells him that all humans are connected to divinity. If one immerses themselves in that divinity and feels its power, they can use divine powers, which is why monster hunters are strong. The first step to possessing divine power is to open one's sixth sense, and Chen tells Lizard that it normally takes a long time to open the sixth sense, but it varies depending on the person. It might take years or even decades, which saddens the poor Lizard, D, but Chen plans to force it open. As mentioned earlier, the process would be very painful, and he asks Lizard if he is okay with it. Lizard agrees, and the process begins. Chin places his hand on Lizard's head and begins to shake his bells. The wind gathers to the handle of the bells after each ring, then, out of nowhere, Lizard begins to feel something. An ominous dark aura seeps out of Lizard's body, and Chin explains that it is the sense of divine power and then checks on Lizard. Lizard says it is not painful but rather creepy, but Chin tells him it is just the beginning. Normally, one has to work slowly to build trust with the divinity to become capable of possessing this power, and if one forces themselves to possess the divine power, the divinity will refuse the request, which worries the young lizard. Chin reassures him that even if the possession is refused, one can still forcefully hold on to it and undergo an incomplete possession. However, those who are incompletely possessed will have half the power of the normal amount and won't be able to use the full power of divinity. Killing monsters is still possible with half of the power. Chin then tells Lizard to close his eyes and focus only on his sixth sense, and there he will know how to call the divinity. Lizard begins to try his first attempt to call it. He only hears a noise at first, then suddenly, he opens his eyes, all blackened out, and eyes peek behind him as lightning pours out of his body. He kneels, tired from this, he yells that he swears. Chin finds this interesting and asks Lizard if he can endure the pain, which he says he can manage. Chin then tells him that he needs to force himself to hold onto it and not let go after calling the divinity. Lizard closes his eyes and tries again, but this time it's quicker and he manages to hold on for now despite the pain he receives as the divinity tries to escape. Chin tells him that all he has to do now is endure the pain while moving. Lizard takes a large, strong step before sprinting toward his former captor, who is currently chained up. The chains begin to snap piece by piece, which allows the monster to dodge Lizard's attack. The large boulder he was chained to is now rendered into a pile of rubble, and the monster is surprised by what he sees. The once broken and hollow child he initially captured, for he was a weakling that could be turned into an endless food supply, is now the hunter who is about to kill its prey. Chin explains to the monster that he can escape if he manages to beat Lizard, which surprises the monster. The lizard then taunts the monster and prepares for the upcoming battle by utilizing his newly obtained powers of divinity. Clouds of dust begin to surround the area of the upcoming battle. The presence of the now strengthened lizard worries the former captor. It wonders what happened to him but promises he will not show the desired results. Lizard initiates the attack and dashes to the monster as the monster grows the spikes on its back and dodges the attack. The monster taunts him as it grows its claws and slashes the back of Lizard. Lizard felt the impact of the cut from the attack, but his pain can be compared to a light scratch, which makes the boy smile widely. He then initiates the counterattack and dashes towards the monster once more but gets slashed in the cheek and the calf of Lizard, which makes him stumble for a moment. The monster takes advantage of the situation and goes to pierce the eyes of Lizard, but to its surprise, Lizard vanishes into thin air before being pierced. He then taunts the monster about how easy it is to trick them and then proceeds to send a powerful punch to the face of the monster, which knocks it back, meters away. The monster received a great amount of damage and concluded that Chen trained him in a short amount of time. Then, Lizard expressed how much he wanted to end the monster's life. Chen is amazed by Lizard's performance, for he is doing agile movements while enduring the pain. He says the lizard is talented since he has great feats after completing an imperfect image in one go and might be better than himself. As explained by Chen, Lizard has a better sense of devotion to divinity than anyone else. Lizard lands a blow to the monster before it grows the spikes on its back and extends it as if it were tentacles. It stabs Lizard in multiple places in his upper torso, but he grabs one of the spikes and bites it off. The monster punches Lizard away to prevent more damage and has to see the terrifying sight that is beheld. 
Lizard lands to the ground smoothly, spits out the monster meat, and laughs ominously as he expresses his enjoyment of the fight. This takes aback the monster and proceeds to grab the spikes on its back and pull it out of its body. The bones connected to the spikes sharpened like a blade, inspiring the young lizard to obtain a weapon as well. He extends his arm forward and squeezes it with the other arm until it is ripped off from his body, making a makeshift club and claiming it as his first weapon, which surprises Chen Wu. The monster grits its teeth and then initiates its attack. It slashes Lizard, however, he manages to block both blades with his arm, which confuses the monster on why he cannot go through with the cut. Chen theorizes that the reason why the arm is durable is because it was pulled with the divine power, but cannot guarantee. Lizard swings off the blades, which knock back the monster, then grabs its arm with a wide grin. He then strikes the arm downward with the bone handle of the arm club, which rips the monster's arm off. The monster screams in pain at the loss of an arm, then dodges Lizard's next attack, sending a shockwave throughout the area. A dust cloud wrap around the area Lizard is in, and the monster takes advantage of this and plans to strike his head once his vision is obscured. It then waits for a moment for the right timing, and once the dust completely envelopes Lizard, the monster sprints into action and initiates its attack. The monster's blade almost reaches Lizard's head, making the monster feel the taste of certain victory. However, the long sharp blade that was supposed to pierce the target's brain shatters into multiple pieces, which confuses the blade-wielding monster. As the monster wraps its head around the situation, the blade did pierce the flesh of Lizard, but it does not completely go through. It got caught by Lizard's durable flesh, which forced the power used back to the blade, causing it to shatter. This does not phase the strengthened lizard, he even taunts the monster for not noticing its presence. Distraught, the monster drops the sword, his jaw, and hopes. The monster felt again the fear he felt in the face of Chen Wu, but unlike last time, the monster senses his death. It turned away and ran without looking back, not noticing the monster it had created leaping toward his rear. Lizard swings back his arm club with both hands, then strikes the monster with great force at the back of its head. The monster's flesh tears open as it slowly becomes decapitated. The head of Lizard's former captor rolls off meters away from its corpse, but somehow it still manages to speak. It spoke of its shame and questioned why he had to end up in this current situation by a mere human. Lizard approaches the severed head, drops the club, and then grabs the head by the halo. As the dark halo disappears, marking the first kill of Lizard, he plans on giving the monster a name before its last breath. He names it. The beginning of revenge marks his first step into his journey to becoming a monster hunter. With the decapitated head of his former captor laying down before him, Lizard finally has a taste of hope to attain vengeance for the death of all monsters. Chen Wu tells him it is time to head to a nearby village. Before following Chen, Lizard takes a moment of silence, takes in the freedom he has longed for years, and thanks his savior. Moments later, as the sun is about to set, Lizard asks Chen what would happen if it took a lot of time to get possessed. There was a pause for a moment, then Chen explained that Lizard's hatred shortened the time needed but did not expect him to do it in one go. Or maybe it was guilt, he says, a boy who does not even know the existence of monster hunters, people like that are rare. They were about to arrive at the village, but suddenly, a huge explosion erupted from the center of the village. They get into gear and possession, then make haste to the village before it is too late. The villagers are frantic and are scrambling from the presence of monsters. A large group of monsters can be seen eating away their victims due to the lack of hunters in the area. One of the monsters dashes away from the group and proceeds to attempt to feast on a young boy who tripped while trying to escape. Before the monster gets to take a bit, Lizard runs in and drags the monster away from the boy, then smashes its head wide like a watermelon. Then he looks up to the monsters looming over from the rooftops in front of him, which surprises the monsters because they thought there wouldn't be any hunters around and start to have an internal dispute. Some of the monsters attempt to run away from the fight but only to be sliced in half by Chen. He is confused about the whereabouts of the Guardian divisions and why aren't any of them defending the villagers. Some monsters were confident in taking down Chen but only to get decimated by his attacks, and some were strategizing but only lost their life from the lack of time for planning. One of the monsters even made a last-ditch effort and said it'd eat at least one person before dying. It jumps down the building and runs towards the boy that Lizard just saved. But before it tries anything, he gets a punch from Lizard to the face, which destroys the head and sends the corpse flying. The child stares at the monster's corpse before Lizard kicks the corpse away so he can stop the child from looking at death. Chin regroups with Lizard, and the villager watching the fight cheered their saviors. As Lizard receives his well-deserved praise, he notices a family kneeling before the deceased and mourns. This frustrates Lizard, but Chin tells him to think of it in another way, to think of the people he saved and let Chin think of the dead. From the roaring crowd, the village head comes out, thanks their saviors, and asks them if they need anything. Chin takes advantage of this and asks the head to give food and clothes to their savior, Lizard. 
The head grabs Lizard and tells the villagers to guide him to the bathhouse and to prepare clothes and food. They carry Lizard away, but Chin notices someone else's presence in another area. Another group of hunters just arrived and were currently investigating the monster corpses. Chin approaches them with an angry aura which scares the hunter trio. He then asks them if they were in charge of guard duty due to the lack of guards in the area. One of them blurted out that there had been no monster activity for a while now, which another member of the trio silenced. Chin asks them what would have happened if he never came and whether they will continue to make excuses in front of the dead. He then tells them to leave and to start apologizing to the victims' families and taking responsibility for the casualties. Time passes by, and nighttime arrives, Chin rests outside while waiting for Lizard. Footsteps can be heard approaching him, and he sees a well-groomed lizard who is fully clothed and has his hair cut. The young lizard thanks his savior once more, and he has attained a new goal. To kill all the monsters as if they never existed from the beginning. Jin tells him that it is a tough goal and that it would be better if he became a monster hunter. Lizard agrees with him. Back then, he could not see anything because he was swamped by vengeance, but now, he is determined to become a monster hunter. He then says that he has no shame and gets down on his knees and begs Chin to accept him as his disciple, and he wants to see the path ahead of him. Chin proceeds to walk past him, and a moment of silence passes. He then asks Lizard to follow him and calls him his disciple. Lizard opens his eyes wide with joy and then runs after his new teacher. As they embark on their journey, Chin tells his new student that it will be a difficult journey for the both of them and hopes that he is prepared for it. Before they leave the village, the young boy that Lizard rescued earlier screams his thanks at him, that someday he will be a rookie too, and that he will save people in the future like him. The young lizard acknowledges his cheers and raises his fist as a sign that he will do his best, and they are off to take the next step toward their goal. The stars of the night shine bright across the sky above our teacher and his disciple. They leave the village moments ago, and Chin starts explaining about the monster hunters and asks Lizard for his thoughts on what it is. Lizard replies that they are hunters who kill the monster's end of the story. Chin explains that he is not entirely wrong, but it's just half of the truth. Hunters serve as both protectors of humans and destroyers of monsters. There are two divisions of monster hunters that share the same fundamental ideology but have different core objectives. The first one is the Guardian's Army, where the primary goal of the hunters is to protect human territory and destroy the monsters that invade it. On the other hand, the other group is called the Advanced Division whose goal is to embark away from the human territory to eradicate the monsters. Chin then asks his newly appointed disciple which division he wants to join, and Lizard replies that he'll join the advanced division without second thoughts. Knowing what division to join is a great start, and Chin tells him they can begin training which psyche is the young lizard up. He explains that the training they will be doing is running and confuses Lizard about its purpose, and he starts to lose determination. Chin then explains that they will be running while possessing the power, thus, they will also be training to maintain the spirit. This makes Lizard harnesses the power, but he wonders why Chin isn't doing the same for him. Chin then explains that he does not need to because God's power is conveyed to some extent when one reaches perfect possession. After that, they began to run at great speeds. Time passes by, and daylight can be seen across the sky, the student and master can still be seen running and managing to reach a canyon. They have been running non-stop for hours, and Lizard is visibly tired. Chin spots something ahead of them and tells his disciple they will take a break. He then points out to the monsters that are feasting on dead animals. Lizard grins and then makes his arm club by ripping off his arm. The monsters hear the approaching humans, and their presence makes them hungrier, and they begin to initiate the fight. Lizard quickly eliminates one of them with a swift swing, destroying the monster's head. Three more monsters begin to attack Lizard simultaneously, but he manages to kill all three in one collateral swing, leaving them a large splatter mark across the canyon wall. Another monster managed to sneak an attack but was quickly countered and got its head smashed into the ground. Chin then yells at Lizard from a distance, telling him he should avoid all the monster attacks before killing them. Lizard asks if it's necessary, then Chin explains that it will make him stronger, so he has to do it. Lizard obeys the lesson of his master and then dodges an upcoming monster strike before counterattacking it, leaving no head behind. A bunch of monsters tried to gang up against Lizard, however, he jumps meters above the ground and finds his teacher's lesson difficult. Midair, another monster, jumps behind him and manages to bite his arm and finds it delicious. This angers Lizard, then he grabs its head then initiates a grand slam, smashing the monster's head into a crater. A bunch of monsters begins to swarm around him, then, out of nowhere, the spirit that Lizard is currently in possession of yells at Lizard that only he can hear. His grip strengthens, and he dashes through the swarm of monsters, and all that passes him gets sliced in half, leaving decimation. Then another swarm begins to gang up on him as they express their hunger and greed for him. 
but they all get killed with one swift cut. This flusters the remaining monsters, making them conscious about the humans they are hungry for. The lizard then taunts the remaining monster and they all attack him simultaneously. Moments later, the canyon is covered in blood, and we see Lizard lying down and resting from all the fun fighting he had just finished. Chen then tells him it is time to leave just after finishing the fight which surprises Lizard. He then explains that they have to go because Lizard is visibly hungry and that they have to embark on the next village to gain food. A moment of silence fills the area, then is filled with the confusion of a hungry lizard before he realizes what he has to do. Moments later, they can be seen running while being possessed despite not getting enough rest. They ran from one village to another and every time they saw the monsters, they eliminated them and began to run again. Initially, this regime lasted for a few days, then several days, then several weeks to the point that they ran so much lizard lost track of time and eventually was on the brink of collapse before they made it to the next village. The village they have just arrived in looks so big and grand, and Lizard asks his master if they plan on resting and eating there, but Chen tells him that they will be eating on the go, which confuses Lizard. Chen then points up to the clouds, and Lizard tries to see what he is indicating but is blurred out by the sunlight and clouds. Lizard squints, then behind the clouds, revealed a large flying turtle ship with a large golden dragon head on the ship's bow. The ship is about to depart soon, they will eat and rest there as the ship embarks to the hunter's base, which excites the young and determined Lizard. The ship Lizardtail and his teacher have reached their destination, the central city, and they are arriving shortly. Excited by this, Lizardtail approaches the windows and presses his cheeks into the glass, staring at the impressive sight before him. As he analyzes the city, he wants to live in a place like that. Upon arriving, Lizardtail can't contain his curiosity and asks his teacher why they came to the central city when he said he would take him to the hunter's base. The teacher, understanding his confusion, responded calmly, revealing that the new headquarters for the hunters had been established in the central city. Lizardtail, for sure, realizes that there must be significant reasons why the headquarters are not in the central city. Perhaps the central city offers more resources, opportunities, or strategic advantages for the hunters and their operations. The huge tree they can see from their position in the new headquarters. Motivated by his desire to become a hunter, he then asks once again a question to his teacher, seeking guidance on the path he needs to follow to become a hunter. In response, the teacher assures Lizardtail that he will vouch for him and his potential. This endorsement carries considerable weight in the hunter's world, implying that Lizardtail's teacher highly regards his skills and character. The teacher also emphasizes the importance of Lizardtail taking the journey seriously. Being recommended by his teacher means that Lizardtail will face closer observation and higher expectations. The teacher reminds him to demonstrate his dedication and commitment to becoming a monster hunter. With Chen Wu's reference, Lizardtail's teacher, the guy from the desk, allowed Lizardtail to join the advanced division, an opportunity typically reserved for experienced and skilled hunters. The guy then points out his monster hunter clothes, and Lizardtail just asks him to give them to him. The guy from the desk quietly becomes pissed as Lizardtail speaks to him informally, given that his face looks young. He hides his annoyance and gives him a set of basic colored monster hunter clothes. On the other hand, Chen Wu is busy reading a book when his son, a battle commander, calls him. They exchange greetings with each other after a long time of not seeing each other. Meanwhile, Lizardtail, observing the interaction between his teacher and his son, notices his son's hand resting on his teacher's shoulder. Being a protective student loyal to his teacher, he confronts his son with a threatening remark. However, Chin Wu being wise, gently pushes Lizardtail's head and calls him an immature disciple. The conversation between the two continues, but as Lizardtail listens, he can't help but let out an audible grunt, which Yi Sun's students hear. Unknown to him, Yi Sun's attentive students heard that, so they threatened him back that they would blow his hair. They said such words and actions are inappropriate when addressing their elders or displaying proper respect within their monster hunter community. Yi Sun's students then salute Chen Wu and inquire about Lizardtail's seemingly rude behavior, seeking clarification and understanding. Chen Wu then asks Lizardtail to say hello back to the other students but he just says they are arrogant and declares that he's much stronger than the other two, which they don't like. Amidst the charged atmosphere and the tension between Lizardtail and yi Sun's students, yi Sun unexpectedly breaks into light-hearted laughter. Finding the situation somewhat amusing, he suggests that they settle their differences by discovering who among them is truly stronger. Playfully, he turns to Chen Wu, seeking his opinion on the matter and highlighting the idea of their respective students engaging in a competition. So yi Sun asks Jisok to find a clean-up operation to hunt monsters. He takes the opportunity to make a critical decision. With the operation approaching, he addresses the assembly appointing Chen Wu as the platoon leader, a position of great responsibility and authority within the team, which Lizard Tail is proud of. Looking at the students, Chen Wu thinks they are so noisy for a platoon which supposed to work closely together and operate as a cohesive team. 
Then they proceed to a place that looks like where they will board. A man awaits them there, responsible for organizing the vehicle and providing the necessary coordinates for their mission. Recognizing the importance of their task, Chen Wu gathers the students, instructing them to make their way to the waiting palanquin, indicating that it is time to embark on their journey. After that, Chen Wu opens the coordinate and puts it in the palanquin. They bid their goodbyes and then leave. Lizardtail, always eager for adventure and new experiences, quickly finds himself fascinated by the palanquin, comparing it to the dragon ship they previously traveled on. Both of them travel at their speed and efficiency. He feels the excitement within him for no reason other than their mission. One of Yi Sun's students, Rayon, asks Chen Wu if he is resting. But he's not there for that and is present for a purpose far more significant than the rest. Sensing an opportunity to tease Lizardtail, Rayon attempts to annoy him, suggesting he is also resting. Unfazed by the provocation, Lizardtail grins in response, further fueling Rayon's annoyance. With an authoritative voice, Chen Wu shouted and commanded them to start the operation. Instantly, the students spring into action, readying their weapons and mentally preparing themselves for the challenges. Lizard's tail grins with anticipation and excitement, ready to kill them all. Chen Wu shouted again, commanding the students to march ahead and stay focused on the mission. Lizardtail jumps out, unleashing his agility and prowess, blowing the mind of the other students. Rayon, somewhat unsettled by Lizardtail's intense determination, expresses his unease, mentioning that he dislikes the seemingly possessed state that Lizardtail exhibits. However, with the operation now underway, there is little time for personal preferences or concerns. In response, Rayon feels a renewed motivation, spurred by the desire to demonstrate the disparity between himself and Lizardtail. Recognizing the challenge, he urges the other student to show Lizardtail the difference in their abilities, setting the stage for a potential rivalry within the mission. In the middle of the intense battle, Rayon asks his co-student, Jiang, to take a moment to rest, and he'll clean up the field for him. But of course, as a monster hunter, the rest should not have been in his vocabulary, so he told Rayon to focus on the mission and mind their businesses. Jiang then thumps his chest and shouts to explode the burning heart. He then now possesses the divinity of heart as if he has a titan on his back filled with fire. With a fire on his eyebrows, Jiang jumps so high. With an astounding leap, defying gravity itself, he ascends to great heights, soaring through the air like a mythical creature in flight and casts a fiery fist that showcases the divinity of fire's breath that immediately covers a wide range of land of the monsters. The monsters, caught within reach of Jiang's blazing assault, cry out in anguish as the intense heat engulfs them. Meanwhile, Rayon is complaining while running because he just told Jiang to take it easy. He then confusingly asks why Jiang is angry, probably because his eyebrows are on fire. Rayon's connection to the divine power of thunder surges to life within him. He successfully possesses it, and with speed and agility, he accelerates, moving at a pace that mirrors the crackling bolts of lightning that streak across the darkened sky. He catches up at Lizardtail, who's also running to go to the monsters. Sensing the perfect moment, Rayon takes decisive action. As he brings his weapon down with all his might, a cascade of lightning explodes forth, transforming the surrounding area into a dazzling garden of electrified brilliance. Rayon smashes his weapon casting his lighting flower garden. Rayon's weapon collides with the ground with a strong impact, unleashing a shockwave that ripples through the area. Proud of that skill, he asked Lizardtail what he thought of that and if he was surprised by his strength. In a display that defied all expectations, Lizardtail, the unbothered king, nonchalantly tore his arms from his body again, leaving Rayon and Jiang stunned and perplexed. The sight before them sent a jolt of disbelief through their veins as they witnessed the incredible regenerative capabilities of Lizardtail's body. The realization dawned upon them that Lizardtail possessed an extraordinary ability that allowed him to regrow severed body parts with astounding ease. For Rayon, it is not a big deal if someone doesn't go to the sky, probably as long as one doesn't die. Jiang observed Lizardtail's unorthodox fighting style in the middle of the battlefield with curiosity and admiration. He found it intriguing how Lizardtail seemed to possess an inexhaustible well of energy, never showing signs of fatigue or weariness. On the other hand, Rayon viewed Lizardtail's relentless endurance as a testament to his recklessness and lack of understanding when it came to conserving stamina. He couldn't help but voice his opinion, remarking that Lizardtail was a fool who unnecessarily drained his energy with his relentless running. It was clear that Rayon and Jiang held differing perspectives on Lizardtail's fighting prowess. Jiang then asks Lizardtail what kind of training Chen Wu put him through, Rayon being the basher, answers that he can tell at a glance that he's a fool who loses his stamina unnecessarily. But, Lizardtail kept running his training and was determined to become a monster hunter. And just as he was about to tell more about his training, an unforeseen event unfolded before him. In an instant, before Lizardtail could even finish his sentence, an unknown figure appeared in front of him fast as a blink of an eye. Without hesitation, he thrust his hands forcefully into Lizardtail's chest, catching him completely off guard. 
a monster with spiky things all around his body is now in front of Lizard Tails, asking if he's the one who did dirty on his land. Lizard's tail doesn't answer, so the monster pushes him, causing him to fall hard. Rayon nervously jokes to lighten the tense atmosphere surrounding them. If it weren't for Lizard Tail's intervention, Rayon and Jiang would now be lifeless, incapable of regenerating their body as Lizard Tail could. Jiang tries to shake off his nervousness because the operation isn't over. The monster shouted angrily, asking once again if they were the ones who did dirty to his land. Lizard Tail being stupid, shouted back, confessing that they, of course, were the ones who destroyed it. He then receives a strong punch from the monster because of that. Rayon shouted not to charge at the monster recklessly because it was not Lizard Tail's only opponent. Meanwhile, Jiang charges his divinity of fire's wrath again. But it looks like nothing to the monster. Jiang's fire can't even scratch him. On the other hand, Chen Wu was watching the worthy opponent appear. Lizard Tail again ripped his arms out to make his weapon and charged at the monster. Even if Lizard Tail loses 1000 times, it will not matter and he'll still kill the monster. Rayon and Jiang charge at the monster simultaneously hoping to end the monster's life, but he just stops it with one hand each. In the back was Lizardtail, ready to attack him, and the monster was aware of it and was about to punch him in the face. Luckily, Jiang is ready to punch also the arms of the monster. He then shouted to Lizardtail not to lose focus as they were in a battle. With unconscious teamwork, they successfully land an attack on the monster courtesy of Rayon. The monster flew away with that strong power coming from Rayon. Meanwhile, Lizardtail was reminiscing what happened, if Jiang hadn't blocked the monster's attack, his head would have flown away, and he would die. The monster then commends that shot of them, and for him, there is nothing as ugly as taking a hit while being careless. The monster was about to hit with all his might, and the devil's ring around his head was now awakened. As the monster swings his menacing weapon around, Rayon and Jiang recognize the danger that comes from the trajectory of the monster's weapon. Sensing the disaster that may happen, they made a split-second decision to take evasive action. The three dropped to the ground to avoid the deadly arc of the monster's strike. As they looked at the back, the remnants of rock formations that stood before the monster slashed his weapon pierced through the surface of the rocks, splitting it in half and alarming the three of them. Jiang tells Rayon that to deal with the evil awakened monster, they need to increase their power. Otherwise, they are going to be eaten by that monster. Rayon's possession is now level 3, and now ready to take some actions against the evil awakened monster. According to Chen Wu, in Lizard Tail's training, the level of possession ranges from level 1 to level 10. The first level means that Lizard Tail can see the image of divinity, whereas level 10 means complete impersonation. Lizard Tail is not even close to level 1. Although he can kill the monster easily in terms of strength, he is more than level 1. But humans have to lean on the divinity. He can beat the strong monsters only when deployed the divinity's power. In other words, if Lizardtail meets a monster who has awakened the devil's ring, he won't be able to deal with him. Lizardtail shakes his nervousness and asks himself what he's scared of. He slapped his face telling himself not to be afraid of death and that he should feel sad that he can't kill the monsters if he dies. He then calms himself and stares at Jiang and Rayon, who fight for their lives to defeat that evil awakened monster. Jiang releases his fire divinity's breath again but his fire doesn't affect the monster. Rayon, on the other hand, charged at the monster where their weapons touched and collided with each other. The monster can't believe Rayon becomes stronger and he's a little different from before. But the monster is so strong he lands a crucial attack on Rayon's stomach, making him grunt in pain. Jiang asks his co-student, Rayon, if he's okay, and he just nods and says that the wound is shallow. Jiang's fire doesn't work on the monster. Besides the ring's power, the monster is physically strong. He can't go in head-to-head -head combat. In that case, Jiang suggests leading him to block the view, and then Rayon will come out from nowhere to land and attack. Rayon suggested aiming the monsters back, but the monster threatened to split them in half. As the intense battle continues, Jiang successfully launches a precise attack aimed directly at the monster's eye from a strategic distance, blinding him for a few seconds. The seconds of disorientation Jiang provided a crucial window of opportunity for Rayon who recognized the advantage that Jiang's attack had bestowed upon him. Sensing the opportunity, Rayon seized the moment and didn't waste a second before he attacked the back of the monster with his lightning all. The combination of Jiang's precise strike and Rayon's lightning-infused assault had caught the monster off guard, making him groan in pain. The monster angrily recognized that they were now attacking together. With his speed, Rayon is confident that the monster can't catch up with him. Oblivious to his words, Rayon accidentally gave the monster the idea to attack Jiang who didn't expect the sudden attack of the monster. But with concentration and calmness, he managed to evade the monster's attack, making the monster angrier. The monster then asked if they were mad about the issue of being born as a monster's food. 
Rayon then confusingly asked what the monster meant because they fled to where they were because they were scared of the monster hunters built by humans. The monster then laughs, commending Rayon for being good at nothing but repeating words. Jiang, on the other hand, with concentration and determination, declared that he would kill the monster and prove that it's not just repeating words. The monster says to stop the flirting and chit-chat and just come at him so he can chop them with his weapon. Meanwhile, Lizardtail being an extra, joins the conversation again, filled with power, determination, and confidence. He remembers training with his teacher, Ching Wu, where he taught him how to beat an awakened monster. According to Ching Wu, the divinity's power is vast. Still, one has limitations in his body, so one can't contain much of it, and because of that limit, unconsciousness prevents the inflow of divinity's power. Chen Wu then taught Lizardtail to forcefully break through the limit and amass more divinity's power within his body. He asked Lizardtail to call his divinity, so he did. Chen Wu continues instructing him, like letting his legs become roots and divinity's power flow through the ground into the body. The next step was to hold the possession and speed up the flow. And just then, he closes the roots and cuts off the flow. With the power Lizardtail has flowing at high speed, his consciousness could stop it. Lizardtail already has the regenerative body and the mental strength to endure the pain, which is the only way to do it. Rayon and Jiang, watching Lizardtail, ask if it is divinity's power that Lizardtail possesses because they think that he's just an incomplete impersonation or possession. Meanwhile, the monster vividly remembers that Lizardtail's shoulders were ripped away, but not that he knows that he can generate he won't let him heal and come back at him. Both the monster and Lizardtail came at each other. Both have different plans. The monster wants to keep him captive because of his regenerative body, while Lizardtail plans to kill him and does not want to make the same results as earlier. No matter what, the power Lizardtail possesses looks quite fretful, so Jiang thinks that it will not last long and that they need to finish the monster quickly. With determination and confidence, Rayon and Jiang join the fierce and intense battle wanting to finish the battle early. In the distance, Chen Wu watches Lizard's tail as it fights the monster. During their fight, Lizard's tail hit him in the stomach, he immediately recovered and hit the opponent in the face. The two continued to exchange stakes. When Lizard's tail was caught off guard, Rayon's help came immediately, and he blocked the blade that was supposed to hit Lizard's tail. A few moments later, Jiang Suk also rushed in, came from the air, and used his divinity of fire while saying the word breathe. This time, the three made a series of attacks, which in turn caused the monster to fall. This time Lizard's tail was gasping for breath, and as Rayon witnessed what he thought was a fool with a lot of stamina, he asked Lizard's tail if he would pass out. Lizard's tail immediately silenced him, saying he would not pass out until he killed the monster. After Lizard's tail says this, Jiang Suk immediately says that even though Rayon is at the third level, he can't face that kind of monster alone, so they must face it together. Lizard's tail immediately agreed but first insulted Rayon who reacted immediately after hearing it. In their banda, Rayon and Jiang Suk's figures will talk. They were talking about something, and Rayon asked if Jiang Suk would do that. Jiang Suk immediately responded and said he had no choice. Here, Rayon could do nothing but remind Ido that if he uses it, it should be moderate and not kill himself. Jiang Suk said they would go first, and he will join them as soon as possible. Lizard's tail immediately said that there was no need for Jiang Suk to do it. He advised Ido to take a break and that he would kill the monster. After that, Jiang Suk concentrated and spoke to his divinity. Because of what Lizard's tail said to Jiang Suk, they started to fight again. Before they started fighting with the monster, they indeed had another conversation. On the other side, you can see the monster that has risen. It thought Lizard's tail would be a problem because of its regenerative body. Still, the dual humans, which refers to Rayon and Jiang Suk, were already damaged, so it convinced itself that it could do it. According to this, failure means death anyway, even if he has to sacrifice his life. After he mentioned this, he held onto his devil's ring. Immediately, a black line appeared on his hands, and his body absorbed it. At the other end, Rayon can be seen observing the place where the monster fell earlier. Still, just a few seconds later, it suddenly appeared in front of him with very fast action. Despite the quick attack of the monster, Rayon still managed to dodge its attack. Here, the two started to exchange attacks. The first attack came from Lizard's tail. He kicked the monster, but it grabbed Lizard's tail's leg and forcefully threw it. Before Lizard's tail could recover, the monster immediately rushed and gave it a very strong blow so that it sank into the ground, which Lizard's tail, in turn, carried. It was just a few seconds ago, and the monster immediately went to it, where it hit and choked. This time, Lizard's tail is at a disadvantage. But then help immediately came from Rayon, who attacked it with his divinity of thunder's breath. After attacking the monster, it immediately looked for and asked for Lizard's tail, but it did not answer. Just a few seconds later, the monster immediately returned and attacked Rayon. After making an attack, Lizard's tail appeared from nowhere and attacked Rayon. He hit him, but he immediately grabbed him in the face with his left hand and punched him in the stomach with his right hand. According to this, it will be easy to faint if Lizard's tail can't breathe. 
But even before Lizard's tailwind was reduced, it forced the part onto its shoulder. Because of this, he let go of the lizard. According to the monster, he sacrificed half of his life, but why are they like this? For a while, he didn't realize that Rayon would attack him. Here, it can be seen that Rayon's lightning was like a knife and pierced the monster's body one by one. And Rayon answered his question earlier and said that they are strong. Despite the lightning flowing and piercing the monster's body, it still managed to struggle. Rayon said he couldn't handle the monster anymore, so they must hurry up. When Lizard's tail is about to try to punch the monster, Jiang Suk arrives, and half of his body is on fire. He stopped Lizard's tail from starting because, according to it, the monster must be finished with one blow. Here, Lizard's tail stopped and just stared at Jiang Suk. Jiang Suk walked slowly. It can be seen that despite its strength now, there are traces of suffering in its appearance. The eyes were watering, and almost half of the body was engulfed in flames. He told him to taste his agony when he got close to the monster. After saying these words, he placed his hand on the monster, seen as a fireball like the sun, and placed it on its chest. It entered the monster's body in less than a moment and came out like a light. After this incident, the monster's body can be seen on fire. After this, Rayon was relieved and thanked Jiang Suk, they finished quickly and he could now relax. But he got his attention when Lizard's Tail asked if he was sure the monster was alright. It was asked which monster, but looking at what Lizard's Tail was looking at, it was immediately alarmed by what it witnessed. His companion, Jiang Suk, is engulfed in flames and engulfed by his divinity. Jiang Suk can be seen struggling as his divinity continues to engulf him. Rayon immediately approached and mentioned that he was late. According to him, the golden bracelet on his right arm must be removed. Lizard's tail casually said that he would do it himself, but Chen Wu immediately approached and said that he would do it. This time Rayon immediately contradicted him because, according to him, even the ground was melting, so it was very dangerous. According to Ching Wu, it's fine. At this moment, Ching Wu's hand can be seen emitting energy. Here he held it on Jiang Suk's head and released a strong concentration on it. A few moments later, Jiang Suk returned to normal. In that moment, Jiang Suk is surprised to learn that Ching Wu helped him. He apologizes and asks if Ching Wun was hurt because of him. According to this, it is fine. He added that he put his divinity power around him, and he is also strong, which is why he was not hurt. Hearing that, Jiang Suk breathed a sigh of relief. Here, Ching Wun said that the mission is over. After he said this, Jiang Suk, who was with him earlier, also came over and apologized. On the other side, although Ching Wun said that he was fine, his damaged hand can be seen. A few moments later, Jiang Suk and Rayon boarded to go home. At the same time as they prepare to leave, Lizard's tail stays in front of the burned monster. Here he said that he was sorry because he did not give him a name. At the same time, its feet stumped in the burnt body and gave it its dismemberment, as if he gave it the name Forgiveness. At the same time, Ching Wun said goodbye to the two monster hunters. Here he said to inform Yi Sun that they were going to the north. He also told them to strengthen themselves, which they also promised in a vision. At this moment, the monster hunter left completely. While the passenger was driving, the driver had a conversation. Rain told Jiang Suk that he should control his ability because Lizard's tail almost became the main character, to which he did not directly call him by his name but called him a muscle head, which was immediately corrected by Jiang Suk, who said, its name was Lizard's Tail and ordered it to reduce its crooked competition here. After hearing this, Rayon changed the topic of the conversation. Here he said that Ching Wun mentioned that their territory would be increased soon. Because of this, the two agreed to be even stronger. This is where the conversation between the two of them began and they continued to leave until it was no longer visible. On the other side, the figures of Ching Wun and Lizard's Tail can be seen sitting on their beds. Ching Wun noticed that Lizard's Tail was still thinking. According to this, he's working hard, but he still needs to think about himself. Here, Ching Wun told it to stop and rest. He needs to rest to make an effort. Lizard's Tail immediately agreed to this. A few moments have passed, but the spirit of Lizard's Tail is still very much alive. Here, he is still wondering if there is another way. In its mind, it's more fun with a weapon. After a few moments of thought, Lizard's Tail came up with an idea. According to what he thought, he sent a flow to the ground and coursed it through his whole body. Here it was asked if he should send it in his arms and try it. Then he'll put a lot of attendees in his arms. But he also thought that when he did that, he would explode. In addition to this, his teacher also told him that he should go to sleep, so he went to sleep. In addition, it will try to do something tomorrow. But before a few seconds had passed, someone thought of it. According to what he thought, the bones were still the same. He got up and said, if he focuses on the bones, surely the bones can withstand it. It wouldn't explode if sent to his bones in the first place. But he turned to the sleeping teacher. This time he decided to sleep again. But lizard's tail is lizard's tail. After a while, it will be seen outside the guard post and begin to carry out what he had been thinking. At that moment, he took a deep breath and used his divinity power. He let it flow. He began to concentrate and focused his power on his arm's bone. 
After a while, it can be seen that there are sprouting lumps and the shape of his arm changes. Lizard's tail was startled. His eyes widened as he stretched out his arm and threw it. He breathed a sigh of relief and told himself that he fully expected to live with such a hand. This time, he would have tried, again because he only now realized that he had done it. He was able to pull his arms again without exploding. This time he celebrated, but a few moments later he slapped himself and told himself to practice again. Here he repeated what he had done earlier. Here you can see the fighting spirit of Lizard's tail. He repeated what he was doing over and over again until the morning. The next morning, when Ching Wun woke up, he thought Lizard's tail had woken up early, but little did he know that he had been practicing all night for his weapon. Ching Wun stretched first and put his bed aside, then walked to the door and went out. When he came out, he could see the surprise on his face because of the one who appeared to him. An environment full of blood, flesh scattered around, and the lizard's tail sleeping soundly. A delivery bird can be seen flying above the sky the next morning, carrying a package for lizard's tail. He didn't even flinch when it landed right next to him. The delivery bird then pinches his cheek with its beak, but he still isn't fully awake, which surprises it. For the second time, it had the bright idea to wake him up finally. The delivery bird forcefully poked him in the cheek until he awoke. Lizard Tail's aura appears unintentionally when he wakes up. When the delivery bird saw it, it was terrified and cried uncontrollably. The delivery bird then took off hurriedly, poor thing. He approached Chen Wu while carrying the package and inquired what was inside. He immediately responded that he had ordered Lizard Tail's new uniform because he had already thrown away his torn shirt. When he opened the package, he noticed a small piece of paper with something written on it. It stated that the uniform payment would be deducted from his salary. After reading this, he immediately asked Chen Wu if they were being paid, and he said yes. With that, Lizard's tail sat down to open the package while Chen Wu stood. He saw marbles in a rectangle-shaped box alongside his uniform when he opened it. He immediately asked Chen Wu what they were and replied that they were marble requests. Chen Wu then demonstrates how the requested marble works. He held up the marble in the center of the rectangle. He claims that all he has to do is write his request on it and channel divine power into it. He can request anything, including support and rescue. It went on to say that he would be tracked down once Lizard's Tail had it. Lizard's Tail was astounded and stated that the Monster Hunter army had a lot of interesting items. After Chen Wu mentioned the items, Lizard's Tail was reminded to put the bed away every time he woke up because they were not the only ones using it. Because everyone uses the guard posts, they must be kept clean. At the same time, he stated that if he went to the back of the guard post where they were staying, he would find a shovel and a broomstick. Following that conversation, he inquired whether Lizard's Tail was satisfied with the outcome of his training last night. Then the Lizard's Tail responded confidently, saying yes. With the broom he held while cleaning the place where he practiced last night, he heard some voices approaching him. According to the first voice, it was as if there was a monster there because of the blood. Here, two figures of people have been seen. That voice just came from a woman currently talking to a man. Besides these two, they have one more companion. While the two continued their fight, one was yawning. While they were walking nearly to the guard post, Chin Wu recognized them and was surprised. It turned out to be his friend, a monster hunter, whom he called Tisu, along with two squad members. Chin Wu introduced Lizard's Tail to them, and they also introduced themselves to the Lizard's Tail. The first member of the squad calls himself Sayal. The second one was a woman who introduced herself as Hemo. After the introduction, Chin Wu mentions that Tisu is like a Lizard's Tail with a regenerative body. During their conversation about work, Tisu came up with an idea. He thought that he could get Chin Wu if he played it well. Here, he has already started taking an interest. He mentioned the missing cases. According to him, the monster division considers it insignificant because the perpetrator is a monster. It immediately caught Chen Wu's interest, which is what he expected to be Chen Wu's response. Tisu continues to tell how he did his undercover work here. In his investigation, he witnessed how the kidnapping took place. While standing at the tree's height, a drunken man can be seen walking. A few moments later, a monster with tentacles like an octopus emerged and grabbed the man. Here he concluded that it was kidnapping because the monster did not kill the man. In fact, he had two victims that he was carrying and said that he would deliver them fresh, which further supported his conclusion. In order to convince Chen Wu even more, he added more information. According to him, he thought he would find monsters in their territory if he followed them, but they came from the north, and the step he took was right because it got Chen Wu's attention. He even said that he created an underground, and this is where he realized they were kidnapping outside the boundary. He also found out that they were only traveling at night, and he also found one of their hiding places. After saying these things, he saw what Chen Wu was thinking. Here, Tisu continued the act to get Chen Wu to agree finally. Here he said that he thinks this kind of thing is not only happening in one place, it is probably also happening in many other places, and one of them is villages. This time, Chen Wu said that if they didn't handle it properly, they could ruin the whole thing. 
After hearing Chen Wu's litany, Tisu's heart swelled, knowing that he couldn't just ignore such things. Here Tisu continued the act and asked Chen Wu if he was interested. If yes, he could become a platoon commander because he has much experience leading platoons. But Chen Wu refused because, according to him, this case could not be solved if he took the lead and offered Tisu to take the lead. This is where Tisu celebrated that his plan to get Chen Wu succeeded. He couldn't help but hug Chen Wu and thank him. As the sun sets, Chen Wu can be seen under the tree, solemnly sitting and talking to his divinity, which Tisu sees telling him to rest. Still, now it can be seen that he is not taking a break. In the next scene, you can see Tisu and Lizard sitting and starting a conversation. Here, Tisu asked what Lizard's ability was. According to him, he needs to know Lizard's tail's abilities to decide what role he should give him. Lizard terribly that he should not bother because it was only an incomplete impersonation. This time, Tisu was shocked by what he said. After a while, he asked him why he spoke informally. Didn't he know that he was Chen Wu's friend? He immediately responded, as usual, with no appetite and said he was not used to such things. Tisu's question immediately followed this, as if doubting, he asked where he lived so as not to know this kind of honorific. But after a few seconds, he got no response from him. This time, Tisu gave up and said he would leave if he didn't want to discuss it. At night, at the height of a cliff, they can be seen crouching down as if watching someone below. A few seconds later, Himo can be seen holding both hands on his head as if hiding while lying and saying that they are going out to hide. The lizard's tail next to her looked innocently at her. At the same time, Sayal mentioned to Tisu that other men could be seen. There they can see the monsters with large cages hanging on their backs. It can be seen that there are people inside it. In the next scene, you can witness the conversation of the two monsters praising the other monster because it caught two more people. So he happily asked if they could eat one because of this. On the other side, you can see a woman imprisoned in a large cage who is scared and begs for mercy. Lizard was immediately alarmed by what he witnessed and was about to rush. Tisu was also alarmed and told him to sit down. But Lizard didn't budge and said that there is no other person who understands that person's pain but only him. Because it seems that Lizard can't be stopped with words, Tisu violently choked him with one hand and said that if he saves this person now, hundreds of people will die later, so they have to sacrifice one. Tisu added that if Lizard's tail doesn't like how he is handled, he should climb to a rank where he can also lead. After the incident between the two, they were surprised to witness chaos in the group of monsters. It is fighting over who will receive the reward. Because of this disturbance, a monster's earlier plan to eat a person in a cage did not go through. The five breathed a sigh of relief because of this, especially Lizard. The monsters started to move. With Tisu's command, he immediately made them follow and leave the place. Then he finished off the seven remaining monsters. He took seven small stones and crushed them with one hand. After he did this, he immediately followed them. A few seconds later, he found the four companions, who were standing still and seemed to be looking at something below the cliff. He was surprised to see the large number of cages containing captive people. They are moving the captives to this place and a monster with long white hair can be seen in charge. Chen Wu commented that he thinks this is their final gathering spot. Tisu then immediately called the five and changed the operation. The monsters were talking about the reward, and this time, their conversation was interrupted because Chen Wu rushed in. It landed in front of the monster in charge here, who was shocked at the speed of the incident. Tisu tasked Chen Wu to immobilize most of the monsters so that they could no longer fight. In an instant, Chen Wu did what he had to do. The leader of the monster could barely move. It gave orders to the remaining monsters to kill Chen Wu. The remaining monsters rushed at Chen Wu. This time it was Sayal who rushed in, this time, he was assigned to restrain the monsters out of battle. Here, you can see his divinity. It was originally a god in Sumerian mythology. He was called the Akkadian, but Sumerians used to call him Enki, meaning dwelling of water. Indeed, his ability is to control his blood. But if he bleeds a certain amount, he will die. On the other hand, he can control other people's blood as much as he wants by mixing a small amount of his blood with theirs. Using this ability, Sayal restrained the monsters. After this, Sayal asked Hemo for protection, and Hemo showed his ability. Here his divinity pan can be seen. Indeed, Pan is a god of healing that appears in Greek mythology. Indeed, his ability is divine healing. Her ability heals opponents' skin simultaneously as she cuts them so that the blood does not come out. Even if their neck doesn't fall, it's the same as being cut off. It's called the Waldo of Healing. On the other side, Tisu and the god Duxini can be seen. Duxini is a kind of ferocious ghost that crushes skulls. Lizard's tail is worried because the monsters are already running. Still, with Tisu's ability, despite the distance, he has crushed the skulls of the remaining monsters. He gets 22 small pieces of earth and crushes them simultaneously as the monsters. Meanwhile, Lizard's tail can be seen being shocked by what he witnessed. At this time, dilapidated cages and devastated areas can be seen. On its side, countless victims can be seen. At last, after the battle between the monsters and monster hunters, the captives are finally set free. 
At that time, Tisu stared at the crowd, took a marble request, and sent a message using it. He went to the crying woman and gave her one of the requested marbles. He told her that they could be tracked to where they were by the rescue team that was coming by having it. Indeed, along with a series of tears, a series of thanks from the victims also came. Tisu and the others received endless thanks from the victims. At that time, they only felt gratefulness and relief. In the next scene, inside the dark cave, we can see some of the remaining monsters that are currently their captives, specifically four monsters bound by Sayal's stringy blood. These captives include the monster that was in charge of them earlier. In the thought of the charging monster, why did the monster hunters capture him? In his mind, he thought that if only he could put his hand on his ring, he would be able to kill them. But yet, Lizard saw it, and with the visible panic that can be traced on his face, he said it looked like it was planning something because of its eyes. With this, Tisu immediately ordered Himo to cut off his hands, which Himo immediately obeyed. After a while, Tisu started asking questions. His first question to the first monster is, where did they go after gathering in this place? The first monster did not give any informative answers and only answered no. In less than a second, Kimo immediately cut off his head. The remaining captive monsters were shocked. The surprise on their faces can be seen in the speed of the incident. At the same time as Tisu's second question for the second captive monster was landed, the monster in charge interrupted his speech. It was pointed out that Tisu thinks that they will talk. He seriously added that if their supply is cut off, something worse will happen. This time, without hesitation, Tyson commanded to cut off its arms, legs, and spine, which Himo immediately did. It fell to the ground. She told him to live the rest of his life like that, and she'd free him. But the monster in charge still didn't budge. Prostrated on the ground, looking up, and eyes wide open, he mentioned that Himo thinks she is strong. She should have gone north then. The monster hunters there are just their puppets, he added. After this litany of charging monsters, Lizard couldn't hold back and offered to kill him if he was so desperate to die. But Tisu stopped him because, according to this, he'll set him free, so Lizard's tail should let him suffer like that. After hearing it, Lizard's tail reluctantly kept silent. Tisu continued to question the second captive monster, but just like the first monster, he didn't like its answer, so he also beheaded it. This time, in the third monster, they got an answer that Tisu Sun wanted to hear. The road is for Beelzebub, it said. When Tisu heard this, he couldn't believe it and mentioned the word Beel. Beelzebub, or Beelzebul, is a name derived from a Philistine god formerly worshipped in Ekron and later adopted by some Abrahamic religions as a major demon. Indeed, Beelzebub, also called Balzebub in the Bible, is the prince of the devils. A few seconds, the charging monster spoke again. But less than a second later, it stopped immediately because of the blood that appeared to be a cloth covering its mouth. After this, Tisu continued to speak again. He said that the last captive monster should be comfortable because the limbs and arms of the monster in charge of them had been cut off. But if he still doubted, he permitted him to kill him. After a few seconds of silence, he summoned the courage to speak. According to him, there's a road leading to the northern boundary underground. After saying this, Tisu next found out about its entrance. Here he says that they need to untie him because the devil's ring is needed to open it. He added that when he opened the door, they had to let him go alive, just like they promised. Tisu immediately agreed to him but gave a warning that if he did anything mischievous, he would do what he did to charge their monster. The monster then seriously replied that they just kept their promise and wouldn't be able to get out alive if they passed through others. This time the monster charged again, saying such words, and his fellow monster finished him off, and said, if he wishes to die, then die, and he'll live. This time the monster willingly walked up to Clift and stuck out its spandrel-shaped hand. After he performed this, immediately, the cliff cut into two and formed a way to the door opened in front of them. After the entrance opened, Tisu allowed the monster to leave as promised. But the chance was that it was not allowed to live because, right when it came out, the right time was the arrival of the rescue teams. A few moments later, it was immediately killed by the rescue team that arrived. Here they caught up with Tisu and reported that their rescue was over. He asked where the support was, but he responded quickly that they were the only ones providing support. The people who came to support them were also put into the rescue job as they could not figure out the number of victims. This time, he did nothing and decided to give them a mission. In a wide room, a shadow of a monster can be seen in front of a throne, on which another monster is called Nava. Here, the two can be heard talking about the chaos that is taking place. It informs Nava that the cliff door has opened, and there appears to be a problem. Here a question formed in Nava's mind and clarified her thought. She asked if the monster hunters had reached where they were now. The monster standing in front of her immediately agreed. Naval came to the conclusion that, in that case, the monster hunters would come right away to their territory because they had found it. After a while, she immediately ordered them to prepare, they needed to resolve the issue before Ball found out. 
When the monster turned away from Nava, he indicated that he would return to their territory without any damage. After he said this litany, a swift force struck his neck. Nava unleashed force because she didn't like what the monster had said. In fact, Nava said that this time he gets to say these useless words casually. The monster's head was cut off, but it still managed to apologize to Nava. A small smile can be seen on her lips while she reminds the predators not to turn back before hunting and they have released the last litany, saying to prepare to hunt each of them. When the monster hunters went down the stairs from the entrance, they were amazed by the size of the place. On the other hand, the rescue teams mentioned that they had not yet identified themselves. The gray-haired man introduced himself as Wood. The bald man introduced himself as Jinwon, and the woman with them introduced herself as Belle. While doing his stretching, Tyson asked them about their abilities. They immediately replied that they had no specific ability because they were called the Chosen Ones. When Lizard's Tail heard this, he was amazed, despite his lack of knowledge. Chen Wu immediately explained this and said the Chosen One could borrow divine power. However, the Great God is helping countless people, so he doesn't want to be possessed by one person. That's why they can't use a specific divine power. Instead, they can exert God's power without being possessed, and their divine power approaches the 10th level faster than anyone else's. After Chen Wu says this, Wood immediately agrees and says they can all exert divine power at the 6th or 7th level. After Lizard's Tail heard this, his emotions poured out, and he said that this was cheating because they needed to hold back the pain for possession, whereas the Chosen One could use divine power without being possessed. In other words, they are the opposite of incomplete possession. At the same time, Tyson gave instructions, according to which Chen Wu is the leader and the Guardian Division is in charge. After this, they immediately took action. While moving, Sayol and Himo had a conversation. Himo asked if he was nervous, and Sayol immediately replied that he didn't know because he hadn't felt it in a long time. In their action, they were stopped because of the noise they heard. A few moments after stopping, the wall on the other side was suddenly broken, and it spat out many monsters eager to kill them. This time, everyone used their own abilities to fight. After a while, they were able to take down some of the monsters, but according to Tyson, he didn't think it was over yet. The monsters they fight are preventatively awakened monsters, so they will have a hard time here because their stamina may be depleted. The awakened monster can make or strengthen their weapons using their devil's ring. According to Tyson, they can run out of energy, but they must hold it together to survive. They need to move forward as much as they can, he added. But a few moments later, Lizard suddenly rushed, and Tyson was shocked and angrily questioned Chen Wu why his student was running away. Here, Chen Wu's only action was to say sorry because of Tyson's scary aura, according to him. He also didn't expect what his student did. A few moments later, Tyson ordered his platoon to defeat the monsters. During Lizard's fight, Chen Wu can be seen looking at him and praising him in his mind, saying he did a great job because he has been holding divine power longer. They continued to fight until Lizard was confronted by a monster that resembled the monster that had grabbed him before. Here, he asked the monster if it was his relative. He added that its name is Vengeance, and the monster immediately reacted because it could not believe that it could kill a monster that had a name. Because monsters with names are considered high-ranking. Little did this monster know that Lizard was the only one who gave it that name. During his fight with the monster, an observing monster saw that the lizard was a regenerative body, so he immediately reported it to Nava. When the witness reports the monster to Nava, she is happy and can't believe that a regenerative body has appeared. According to her, it will be a wonderful gift to Baal. She immediately ordered the monster named Hiru to prepare the gift and repay the monster hunters. The constable responded immediately. Here the evil of Nava's conscience settled, and she said, I wish they would like it. On the other side, you can see the monster hunters who have finished fighting. After a few moments of waiting, they had the pleasure of resting first. But before moving, they suddenly saw something on the other side of their direction. This time, Tyson's face was visibly angry at what he had witnessed. Tisu stared angrily at the monster exposed in front of them, not because it was a monster but because of what it was carrying. What they're seeing right now is a four-armed monster. In addition to its two hands, it has two other large hands on its opposite side, where a net full of human arms can be seen. The monster hunters couldn't hold back anymore from what they were seeing. Hemo stepped forward and tried to move, but Tisu stopped him. He calmed Hemo and told her to be patient and stay still. This time Tisu asked the monster where it came from, but the monster replied as if it was having so much fun. It said, with a grin on its face, that he had great fun collecting those arms. It added that nothing will be left to them when they don't hurry up. 
Indeed, at this moment, the pent-up flame inside them has exploded. A while ago, it was Tisu who stopped his companions from making a move, but this time he was the one who couldn't hold it back anymore and used his ability on the monster. Its blood spilled, and in an instant, it took its life. In the next few seconds, Rang Tisu gave a command to Sayal, ordering him to mobilize his blood. Sayal accepted the command wholeheartedly and uttered the term fifth level possession. Here it can be seen that his hand has changed its form. It had what looked like little branches growing on its skin. After a few seconds, he immediately let the blood flow into his hands and mixed it with the blood of the monsters. This time, he was able to control the blood of the monsters that were present in that place. Tisu said their destination doesn't just end at the very end of the road. He immediately told Tisu that he needed to find a hidden place somewhere nearby using his abilities. With enough blood that he got from the large numbers of monsters in that place, he managed to search every place after several times of searching until he finally found a deep spot. After seeing the deep spot, he immediately told Tisu that he had found one. Tisu immediately told him to focus and dig that way. Little did they know that this was the location where Nava's throne was. When Sayal's blood entered, he was also surprised by the monsters that were currently in that area. At first, they wondered what that red thing was, but they immediately informed Nava what was happening. But Nava was no longer surprised by what he witnessed. They didn't bother to make a move and let the monster hunters get there. On behalf of the monster hunter, Sayal immediately informed him that his blood could not go any further. Here, Sayal was ordered to tail off his ability and mark the way with his blood. Sayal immediately objected because, according to him, that was too far, if he did it, the monsters might erase the marks. Tisu immediately answered this complacently, saying it wouldn't happen because the monster even provoked them to go in. The school didn't object anymore and did what had to be done. Here, he collected the blood in the middle and sprinkled it. This time, Tisu wholeheartedly commanded his team to follow the bloodstains. And if the monsters do any tricks, kill them. In the place where Nava is, they can be seen waiting for the monster hunters to arrive. When the monster hunters arrived in an instant, they made a way through which they made a triangle-shaped door in the earthen wall that acts as a barrier between them. In the opening of Monster Hunters, he also exposed the appearance of two powerful monsters. First, here is Nava and the one standing next to his throne, Hiru. This time, Nava quickly removed the meme. After a few seconds, Tisu spoke and asked if he was the asshole. Nava. On the other hand, Lizard's tail can be seen wondering at the two monsters. It asks the adjacent monster who is that asshole who treats these monsters with a sort of dignitary grace. The monster immediately responded with a warning, and Lizard's tail immediately killed it. This time there was an exchange of words between Nava and Tisu, and as expected, Nava did not like the young soldiers, especially the confident expressions on their faces. After a while, the big door opened, and it spat out many captive people. They can hear the talk about the monster hunters. The expressions of the monster hunters, especially Tisu and Chen Wu, became gloomy. Nava was happy with what she witnessed. A few moments later, the smiling Nava gave orders to the many monsters before them. It ordered them to start eating people. This time, the monsters immediately rushed to eat the people, but the monster hunters immediately protected them. This time Nava is complacent, knowing that in the end, everything will be in her grasp, and the strongest will be the first to disappear. Tisu immediately blew up the head of the monster that tried to attack the captive humans. Here, you can see their terrified faces. This time Tisu thought that, according to this, he still needed time to blow up the heads of the monsters. Here he gave Sayal a command to secure the people and buy him some time. While fighting the monster, Tisu replied that he couldn't do it because he had used too much blood to search for directions. Here, Tisu was asked what he should do. There were signs on his face that he was having difficulty thinking about what to do. Here Nava spoke, according to this, he is thinking carefully and has not yet thought of how to escape. When Tisu heard this, his teeth gritted with anger and tension. A few seconds later, he yelled at Chen Wu, saying that their top priority was to save the people, so he gave Chen Wu the command to make way for them. When Chen Wu heard this, he immediately shouted the word Samjido. The anger and determination in his actions can be seen in his eyes. Here he dodged the weapon horizontally and split a large number of monsters in the image, and at the same time as the body was split in the image, there was a long way out from where they were. Here Tisu shouted and told the humans to hurry up and run towards the road that was made. After hearing this, doubts can be seen on their faces. According to these, what if they die if they run there? What if monsters kill them? Hemo immediately replied and told them to trust them because they would protect them from the monsters. Here they thought, and they united in trusting the monster hunters. A few moments later, they started running. Despite the fear, they did their best to run fast. At this time, Tyson immediately gave command to his platoon. 
Here he assigned Chen Wu to lead the people at the forefront. It also ordered the Guardian Division to follow Chen Wu to rescue the people. Finally, it said that those left will be charged with the two monsters who have not yet done their actions. Tisen refers to Nava and Hiru. According to this, they cannot ignore them, especially since they do not know the danger that they possess. But according to this, first, everyone should focus and reduce the number of monsters. They immediately responded and continued fighting. As they fought, Nava spoke again while sitting on his throne. Here he laughed and said that he was sure the monster hunters chose the strongest hunter among them to rescue humans. In addition to this, their team has lost strength because of their pathetic sense of mission. After a few moments, he told Hiru that it was time. Hiru immediately responded to this. On the other hand, Lizard's tail can be seen as someone fond of killing monsters. Here he was called by a fellow monster hunter, but Hiru started here simultaneously. According to this, they went to another place called Lizard's tail, a regenerative body. Here, Lizard's tail was surprised because of the speed of action taken by Hiru. Instantly, it punched the Lizard's tail with such strength that it fell to a distant part. Hemp witnessed this and immediately shouted about the event to Tisu. This time, so many thoughts flowed through his mind. It thought and asked itself if the aim of these was the regenerative body or if this action was because they wanted to divide the strength of their group. He was about to drown in his thoughts when Hemo purposely made a noise with his weapon that woke up Tisu's spirit. Hemo said that Tisu should stop thinking too much about this. Sayal added that they would take care of the affairs here and he went to help the stupid lizard's tail. After this, Tisu acted quickly, simultaneously, he asked for forgiveness and told the two to be careful. Nava smiled at the sight. According to this, the monster hunters always aim to save the people, but they have lost their strong team members. He says not much is left for him to have fun with. At the same time, he stood on his throne and walked toward Himo and Sayal. Nava's smiling and confident face can be seen here. Despite this, seriousness can be seen in Himo and Sayal. Himo says she'll take care of her as long as Sayal supports her. Sayal immediately agreed to this. Now Lizard's tail can be seen fighting with Hiru. When Hiru started to attack him, he immediately blocked it with his arms. Here, Hiru was amazed because he blocked his attack. He called Lizard's tail a regenerative body, but Sir Lizard's tail immediately reacted and said his name was Tail. Hiru immediately replied that he was not interested in human names that anyone could get. In addition, we do not know how he lives this kind of life. After a few moments, Hiru's face immediately became confused because of what he saw. At that moment, Tisu arrived. When it arrived, he immediately said he wanted to finish it quickly. His gnarled hand was positioned, ready to blow Hiru's head off, but as he executed his attack, it didn't hit Hiru. According to this, Tisu's trick would have worked on him if he hadn't moved. Here, Hiru already knows how Tisu's ability works. Its attack begins with a headache. After that, it unleashes an attack that has no form and causes the heads of those who fight it to explode. After explaining how Tisu's attack works, it says that Tisu's attack is destructive but not enough to destroy his horn. For a few moments, Hiru held onto his devil's ring and absorbed it into his body. Here, Tisu saw the second awakening and concluded that it was a monster with a name. At the same time, Hiru introduced himself to their Halwa, and casually said that he would kill Tisu and take the regenerative body. On the other hand, Lizard's tail got curious about the second awakening and asked if it was stronger than Hiru. Tisu immediately replied that he was only as strong as Chen Wu. He needed time to raise his level. He needs time to reach the higher possession level of Duixuni. Here, Lizard's tail immediately asked what he had to do. Tisu immediately answered and gave his command. According to this, while raising his level, he's incapable of fighting, so don't whine, Sir Lizard's tail, and protect him well. After hearing Tisu's litany, Lizard's tail immediately increased his power. With a smile and confidence, Lizard's tail told Tisu to take his time because he would fight this black tattooed monster. Tisu immediately reminded him to be careful because the second awakened monster differed from the ordinary monster. Lizard's tail immediately responded with full self-confidence and told Tisu not to worry because he would kill Ido. At the same time, Tisu started to increase his possession level. Along with this is Hiru's extremely fast action, which Lizard's tail couldn't keep up with. Here, Hiru said that it is better to eliminate the possible risks. At the same time as he swung his sword in Tisu's direction, Lizard's tail also swung his weapon to block the attack. But that's just the speed of the event of seeing even. He blocked it but still hit Tisu's innocent body. When Hiru dodged his weapon, it hit Tisu's entire left arm. Here, Tisu did nothing but apologize. Here he apologized and said he didn't know it was that fast. At this moment, Lizard's tail promised the group members who are currently doomed that he would improve. 
After a while, you can see the healing of Tisu's shoulder. Lizard's Tail did not immediately notice this. If Lizard's Tail didn't notice it, Kiru would be the one who would be upset. Here, I was very surprised by what I saw. At first, he thought Lizard's Tail was the only one with a regenerative body, but the embryo was too big because the regenerative body turned out to be two persons. Here, the joy and excitement that Hiru feels on these times are very visible. According to him, he has to hurry and finish this. Despite its confident face and litany, Lizard's Tail did not agree with it. The determination can be seen on his face and he says he won't allow it. What will be the fate of the two regenerative bodies? Will the monsters get hold of them or will they defeat them? And that's how the first part of this man wins. Well guys, if you like this video and you want a second part, comment below with the word part 2 also subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell and like the video. But most important, leave a comment. Until the next video.